remember when Dyson decided to try a range of cleaners, notably this cylinder and the matching upright, with no pre-motor filter. You didn't think that the 20 years of experience that, well, that they've had with their machines being clogged up, not lasting and generally hating fine dust wasn't enough. They thought they would try no filter at all. And this has just landed in for having no suction. Could it have a refurb? So I said, yep, yeah, of course, very common. We've had one of these before. I've had one of these before and got it from the financial controller at my work, oddly enough. Some people have more money than cent. But the owner of this one has some sense. So let's see just how badly clogged up it is check there's nothing else wrong with it and maybe have a peek inside of it and see just how clogged those little rubber tips which are supposed to fling around and fling all the dust off which i'm sure it does for the first six months of its life see how they look now Yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner and Dyson chums. How are you today? Yet yeah, this is the Dyson DC54, the standard big ball cylinder design, but with no pre-motor filter. Everything that goes into this machine relies on the cyclone separating it out. And I mean, actually, if we lift it back up again and look in here, it's not too bad. I mean, obviously, all of the fine dust goes straight through it because, you know, not even a filter can stop that with a Dyson sadly, no matter what the fanboys say. But this was a step worse than that. I mean, part of it is probably going to be this floor head doing its usual thing of all the hair gets wrapped up either end. Inside, of course, you can't really get to it without a full strip down. And there's probably a couple of other things in between. So it landed literally 10 minutes ago. Smash. I haven't done a thing to it by what we've just done now. Let's start troubleshooting. And first we'll see just how bad it really actually is. It's not awful, I can't lie, but it's not sharp either. It's got airflow, but it's not, you know, these things do roar along quite happily when they're in decent fettle. This one definitely isn't in decent fettle. Let's have a check of this in case the lady's getting confused with this just not spinning at all. Oh, yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah. It shouldn't spin that slowly. That is that is greatly reduced performance somewhere. A quick check we can do. Oh, yes. There we go. Yeah, you can just feel it clog up the entire machine. Bless them there. Oh, I mean, fair enough, it has this very warning which you must heed for pretty much every bagless vacuum cleaner they all hate rubble plaster ash tolkien powder carpet freshener powder fine dust you know if you're a very dandruffy sort of person a dyson is going to hate you let's see what the state of in here is oh look it's still got look this is the cleaning tool that dyson used to give you because there's such little space in oh my Goodness, because <gasps> there's such little space and people don't take the bin off. You're supposed to sort of go around and Tolkien powder, call it. You're supposed to go around and you know pick all of these up, and it's just terrible. Go fetch that in a minute because it has to go back on. Oh, let's take off the bin. Oh my goodness, yeah, those are the little rubber nobules. Let's just turn the light on. Eh. There we go. Those are the little rubber nobules. And the ones inside there, you're going to focus? Ooh. They're starting to fill up. Those ones out there are starting to fill up. And I don't know if I'll be able to manipulate them. Better. 
to get something really long so I don't have to put my hands in there. In theory, yeah, look, they do still move, but they're rubbery. And the idea is, is that they turn with the airflow. This channel, Mr. Vacuum Facts, aka Johnny L8, did a video explaining how this works, which is very true for when they're brand new, shiny, and you don't really use them for dust. But the problem is, there's about 15, obviously I'm low in there, there's like millions of layers of those. That is only layer one. It is only going to get worse as the thing goes down. And unfortunately, that is what is going to be the problem with this machine. My only other concern then is how much of it did get through and how much of it has clogged the very expensive, pretty much non-replaceable post motor filter. Because obviously all of these machines have a post motor HEPA filter, which you can't wash, can't really replace because it's bonded to the cord reel. All I've got to hope is that all that dust airlines out of it and yeah, can be all nicely cleaned up. Oh my goodness. People ask me about these. Oh, do you think I should get one? I think they're really cool. And yeah, they are. Oh my goodness. It's also broken, folks. The whole clip on there has gone. Oh dear. It's probably not going to be the end of the world for it. But still not great. Oh, ah. Uh-oh. Uh. I might have to mention that, see if she's actually bothered about that or not, because if she is bothered, that's going to get expensive, because it will need this entire mid-piece here. There's one more tool that I got with it as well, which is the Tangle Free Turbine tool, because again, I can give that a bit of a clean out, and if we pop this on there, take this off here, Like that. But it's also been used, it's also been hamstrung by this, and yeah, for the owner who's had it, we've done it for 10 years, she said, you know, is there anything you can do about it? And I said, of course there is. For them to notice that it's got that bad, it must have just dropped. I imagine it, it, it builds up, builds up, and then just, just gets too much and dies. So yeah, oh, it's also running quite warm. As well. Yeah, freeze, my friend. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the air coming out of the exhaust port triples when you take the cyclone off. I mean, who would have thought that not having filters in a you know notoriously terrible bagless system anyway? And I'm saying that with in mind that Dyson make the best cyclone system out there because obviously they patent the crap out of it. So nobody else can touch it. And they're still not brilliant. And this doesn't look like it's been abused. I don't think it's been used for plaster dust. My hands just smell of like stale talcum powder. And the manual doesn't say that ladies or gentlemen aren't allowed to clean talcum powder up with their Dyson. You know, it's on the bedroom floor. Of course it's going to get cleaned up. And this is what happens. So, yeah. Ugh. All we really have is the usual thing that these kinetic machines do. The uprights are even worse because the uprights also suffer from all the same things that the Dyson DC75 that they are based on suffer from. At least the cylinder only has this bit to curb stomp it to the floor. And you know, there you go in the bin. I saved this in theory for me thrown in the skip, assuming that she doesn't care too much about that and can live with it after I've charged her money for refurbishing it. You know, they, it would have been thrown away. And it's still a good cleaner. Once it's been cleaned up, it will go on for another eight or nine years before it fills itself up again internally. So, you know, there is hope. Can you tell that I'm not a massive fan of them? Oh, who knows? But I am a massive fan of them because it brings me some wonga. So the old girl will live again. <sighs> so do you have a Dyson DC-54? Has it done what a Dyson DC-54 does? I'm going to try and show you all the cyclone after it's washed. I'm not going to strip it down there. It will be disgusting. Try and show you all of the layers. It's, it's been a while since I've been inside one of these, so I shall have to remind myself of that. And yeah, we can have a count, because it, it gets quite busy in there, and it works beautifully when it's spotless and out of the box, but as soon as you give them dirt, Dyson's just 
don't last. Ah, have you noticed that? Let comment down below. But until the next time, when hopefully this Dyson DC54 is all better again, I and it will see you soon. Bye bye.